Well, here we have the same problems we had with PV. There are people who think that PV and ET are essentially the same disease. And the fact of the matter is that virtually no person who has true jak 2 b 617 f positive ET has a, an allele burden, a quantitative allele burden, greater than 50%. Now, you essentially have a chimera there. You have 50% or more normal cells, and the malignant cells cannot, the malignant stem cells cannot outcompete the normal cells. So ET patients can have essentially a normal lifespan, which is not to say that if you're a man with ET, you do have a tendency to go develop myelofibrosis. Women generally do not have that tendency. There are some patients who have a low allele burden, but actually have PV that starts out as ET. And over time, generally it can take up to 12 years, they will develop polycythemia virus. So you can't ignore these patients. Um, it's been well proven that the high platelet count does not cause thrombosis, it causes bleeding. In fact, there is no correlation between venous thrombosis and the platelet count. In patients who have arteriosclerotic heart disease, yes, um, too many platelets can prove a problem, particularly if they're sticky. And in about 30% of ET patients, platelets are sticky. We don't understand why, and they'll get burning pains in their hands and their feet, which are uh, diagnostically and uh, therapeutically relieved by aspirin. That's a, if you have burning pains in your feet or your hands and you take an aspirin, it goes away. That's erythromyalgia. Can happen in polycythemia vera as well as ET. Um, and just as an aside, um, you can ask, well, why does ET turn into PV? Well, on one hand, it, there may have been masked erythrocytosis and you're, you're missing the PV at the moment. On the other hand, stem cells only have one growth factor receptor, the thrombopoietin receptor. And stem cells need megakaryocytes to stay quiescent in the bone marrow. And so a default for a stressed stem cell is to make more megakaryocytes, which means more platelets. So PB, ET, and PMF often start out with thrombocytosis alone. So it's important if you just have thrombocytosis, not to decide this patient has ET, but they could have the other diseases. But as long as the quantitative allele burden, which most physicians do not order um, for JAK2 is less than 50%, you're really not going to have a problem. And um, physicians need to know that. And not every patient needs to be on aspirin. If they have ocular migraine or TIAs or erythromyalgia, then aspirin is helpful. Um, I caution against using chemotherapy in any myeloplift disorder because the stem cells are resistant to conventional chemotherapy. We see patients who have uh, polycythemia vera or have a, um, and get acute leukemia. The leukemia is treated, the polycythemia, polycythemia vera stays there. So, you want to also stay away from chemotherapy because patients as they get older get chip. They get other mutations. And hydroxyurea is a drug that allows damage, cells with damaged DNA to go through cell cycle. So they have a uh, um, proliferation advantage over normal cells. And one of the prominent causes of chip is TP53. And uh, hydroxyurea blocks TP53, which is the gatekeeper, keeps people from having cancer. It also causes TP53 haploinsufficiency uh, by causing a 17P mutation. So, and it's also uh, well documented to cause acute leukemia. In fact, now we're seeing acute leukemia in sickle cell disease patients who are old enough to develop CHIP. And um, so I, I really counsel against giving anyone a chemotherapeutic agent to lower platelet count. If you want to lower the platelet count, you should use interferon. And there is now a FDA-approved form of interferon. Um, 
and stay away from um, trying to sanitize blood counts because hydroxyurea does not hit the stem cell except to damage it. 